<laughs> I do like the music. Hey, this is Justin Lethby. I am the e-professor of real estate, and we are starting our second blab of uh, the year or, <laughs> or the century or however you want to deem this. Um, our blabs are going to be essentially things on tech and how to take advantage of them. And also, like today's topic will be how to handle it kind of in a smart manner. Um, today's topic will be automate, not how to automate yourself out of business. So, um, Jason, you want to spend a couple seconds introducing yourself? Yeah, I'm Jason Bates, and I have a podcast called Valley of the Sun Real Estate Show that you can check out on iTunes, or you can go to my website and connect with me on any social media platform, and that is www.valleyofthesunrealestateshow.com. Awesome, awesome. Right, cool, mm -hmm. cool. So we got a lot to talk about, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here, and, and um, I know, Justin, you being the tech guru that you are, <laughs> um, I, I'm not as good as you are. You're like one of the best I've ever met, of course. And and um, doing this tech thing and getting too automated can be a little overwhelming for some realtors out there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I I think one of the things that happens in there, and I'm a big automation fan. We spent a little time offline talking about this before we started. That I, I try to systematically plan things so I'm automated and doing things strong. But one of the things I worry about, and in, Jason, in we had a conversation offline about this as well, is what we'll see is realtors hire these companies that say, we will blast these social posts out for you, or we will um, we'll send you a nice email campaign. And of course, the value in these companies, they've already built these templates and are out there, and they sell it to hundreds, if not thousands of realtors at a time. So when you get these emails, everybody's getting the same thing. You get these Facebook posts, everybody's getting the same thing. Kind of like those turkey recipes that everyone's getting right about now. It gets to be a little, a little insane. So um, yeah. I'm not against automation. I just I'm I'm very much pro automation, but I want to be systematic and very on point with the conversation and and um, the message that you're trying to get across. Well, and I think that's important, right? Because I mean, when we do think about automation, you can do automation, but it's got to it's got to have a personal flair to it. And I think we lose uh, touch them of this a little bit because people do business with people they like, right? People they can associate with. And if I don't really care about turkeys, then I'm not going to really, you know, get the whole thing about, you know, how to bake a turkey. You know, I'm not a cook kind of guy. Um, but if you talk about other things that I'm interested in, then I'm definitely going to, you know, perk up and listen. So automation can be a little um a little bit of a down downside it's good every contact is good and i'm you know I'm, i agree with you justin automation is good but it's got to be used in the right way and that's what we're going to try to try to go over today you know i got i'm getting all kinds of emails you mentioned about how to make a turkey <laughs> i'm getting all kinds of emails from realtors um that have an email blast that goes out to their database and it's the same article just different branding on the article mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, I'm like, hey, if you could personalize that a little bit more, I think you'd have a little bit better return on that, a little bit better penetration um, on that type of, of, of marketing strategy. When I see it, and if I'm a consumer and I've, I've got a couple different realtor friends that are, that are sending me stuff and I get the same thing, I may not take it as serious. I may not look at that realtor as being, um, I don't know, involved, I guess is the right word as much as I would from somebody who actually took the time to write a personal kind of experience or, or you know, what's happening or, or whatever. Um, what do you think about that? That's just my personal opinion. I don't no, know I, other people feel that way, but. I, I completely agree with that. I, you know, you look at it right time in this year. I started real estate eight years ago. One of the things they taught me um, at this time of year is to buy Christmas cards and then write a little note for each person, right? Yeah, I could just send a Christmas card and say Merry Christmas on each one and boom and be done. And it would have a little bit of effect, right? You're going to have something. Someone saw your name. Oh, hey, great. My realtor thought of me. Boom. Great. Right. Um, but if I write, you know, Merry Christmas, hope your dog's doing well. Um, Merry Christmas. Hope you had a great Christmas with your grandkids. You know, if I wrote something particular on each person I knew something about, it's going to mean that much more because they now sit there and said, oh, you know what, Justin, he paid attention. He knows who I am. It's it's more than just in the realtor. Now it's it's just in the realtor, um, my colleague, my friend, my my trusted ally type of situation. And yeah. I think it's the same way with automation all the way around. Facebook's gonna be the same way. You can't do the same strategies, but if I'm posting the same thing, same emails everybody else has got going out there, uh, how do you how you know how are you any different than every other face in the crowd? 
And that's where I think that um, video plays a major role in that, right? Because instead of sending out an email that says, you know, how to bake a turkey, why not send out an email that has a video of you maybe explaining how to bake a turkey or, you know, tips on how to bake a turkey or, you know, something like that that's coming directly from you rather than some, you know, bot that's typing up some kind of article for you kind of thing. Or even better yet, if you're out making the turkey, you got all these fancy tools now, Snapchat, your picture, yeah. your phones, um, uh, uh, Instagram, right? You got all these things. Now you can take these pictures, put a little note on there and send it to your friends. Hey, I was making the turkey. Here's, you know, here's my favorite tip for baking turkey, making turkey. Boom. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, happy Thanksgiving. You know, you can do these things out there and have that at the end and say, boom, I get a lot. I It amazes me. I, I like I, I I got a really cheap smoker. <laughs> I got a, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I got a really cheap smoker um, and I took Snapchat pictures. The first time I was doing some smoking on it and I put some things on Instagram. Those were some huge hits for my sphere and my client database. And now I could take one step off that because that picture already exists in my arsenal. I could take that picture and. Maybe do like a like an iJot picture or a video with it real quick. Put it in there and then send it through an email. Or if you got bomb bomb, tie it in there. Say, by the way, you know, here's my collage of pictures. Happy, you know, happy Thanksgiving. Hope everyone enjoys your Thanksgiving. Now it's from me doing something and having a great day. Right. Right. And it takes no more effort, right? It takes no more effort. You've already done everything anyways. I'm not trying to ask people to spend more time. I'm trying to actually teach people how to spend less time, but be more on point. Yeah, exactly. Be more on point. I think that's the key takeaway from that because you, if you're not on point, people are going to, and you've got only got a short period of time to capture somebody's attention, right? So um, I think the whole video thing, I think it's fantastic. And there's ways to automate that um, through some of the CRMs. I used to use Realty Juggler and they allowed you to embed video into the emails that you would send out, which were, which was fantastic. Um, and I don't, I think Salesforce allows for that. And some other of the CRMs that, you know, realtors may use, um, allow for the embedding of video and just take the time to make that video. And, and, um, I think it'll go a lot further than trying to plus aren't, aren't those, aren't those articles or those people that send the companies that set up, set up those articles, isn't it pretty expensive? They can be, I mean, I, I've seen some do it pretty cheap, but no, a lot of times you're spending a hundred dollars a month type of type of pricing that's out there. You had one that lasted for a little bit of time was, I think it was either happy grasshopper or grasshopper or something like that. And they were, they weren't, I mean, they weren't a hundred dollars a month, but they were probably 50 bucks a month. And it wasn't even a real CRM. You were just doing the mailer. So you weren't even keeping your database in there. You were just, you were just sending out, you know, you were giving them the database, sending out emails. Um, right. And it becomes a challenge. I just put in the links just so you understand why I put that in there because you were mentioning video. They were saying in 2019, 80% of all uh, consumption on the internet is going to be done via video. Yeah, absolutely. And live streaming like we're doing now is, is coming yep. coming of age, right? So the other thing too that I really like about video and using some of the automation tools to get your video out there, within the video, especially for like if you post it on YouTube, you can have your call to actions within the video. Subscribe to the channel, um, visit my website, those sort of things. In an article, I think it's pretty hard or difficult to do that because most people read the first couple paragraphs, and if they don't, if you don't grab their attention, they're off the article. And so, but in a video, it's a lot more captivating, and you can have more call to action and show a little more passion for what you're trying to get people to do. I was, I was, you know what? It's timely because I was just at a, I was at a networking event for trainers only yesterday, and that's one of the things they were talking about is they were using. One of the trainers out there was using Camtasia, which is a video capture software, to show their her family of why they want to get this present for their mom, right? And it was funny because they had the, they were doing the capture, they're following along and showing the website, but you could see her in the bottom corner, as you could see the energy she was saying how how much she thought this was a very good idea, and she said within five minutes she had a hundred percent you know agreement rate, and you if you yeah. just sent through an email, I was going to say hem and haw, maybe maybe not, whatever. Right. <laughs> Um, but with that video, you are capturing that stuff. You're getting, you know, you, you can see me and all my hand gestures. You can see everybody else doing what they're doing. You can see that energy. Um, the only bad thing about this is, is, you know, if you just came back off a late night of drinking, you probably don't want to be doing video that next day because you're going to 
yeah. you're going to be a little down with it, right? The energy won't be where you want it to be. Right, right. I was just talking to a realtor last night who did that. Um, he did a, a series of videos and he tried to cram all these videos like into one day, right? And at the end of the day, he was so mentally spent that he couldn't keep up. He wasn't, he was kind of like punch drunk kind of thing. And he just had to like, let it go. And so don't try to do too much, of course, you know, but I think going back to Justin, to your, to what you were saying earlier, you know, some of the realtors that, that I've done videos and, and helped them do videos uh, for, they actually will take um, an everyday occurrence um, and take that and put it into a video. For example, one realtor here in Phoenix, Arizona did, you know, things you'll find in a realtor's car. And she did like candy wrappers and, you know, power bars and yard signs and all kinds of lists and all the, and she did like a five minute video. She got over like 2000 hits on that video. So some of the common things that we kind of take for granted can not necessarily go viral, but you can integrate that into your CRM and put that out there um, as just an everyday kind of, kind of video that really, you know, uh, how do you, how do you, what's the word I'm looking for? Extenuate, extenuates or, or really shows your personality. You know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Have That's you ever, um, state, I guess is what I'm saying. There, there was a recent movie out about two years ago, maybe three years ago called the chef. You yeah. ever see that one? Uh -oh. So it was about a guy that was a chef, a premier chef and he was kind of in a rut and he basically got fired from his chef's job from, from whatever circumstances. And, um, he took his son on this road trip because he bought one of those uh, roach coaches, right? <laughs> and he recondit it and redid everything. And he made amazing food. But he took this trip all the way through from like California, from coast to coast, essentially. I don't remember if it was East Coast to West Coast, West Coast. It doesn't matter. But what happened, and the whole reason for setting that up is there's an app, and they referenced it in the movie, but it's a real app. It's called One Second Every Day. And all they did, it was took one second and maybe it was a quick word or you sitting behind a scene or you sitting in an open house, whatever you take the seconds. And once you get to a certain point in time, now you can capture this as a video showing basically the time in life of whatever. That's cool. Uh, and it, it's a very sweet app. And again, it's one of those things that now you can repurpose for all the things. And again, I think there's a lot of automation you can do. Right. And these are how some of the things you can just take very simple times out of your life, recreate this material and now have something that is you in a personal line and saying, this is what I'm doing every day. Right. You know, I'm in front of a new house. I'm in front of, I'm in my car writing a contract. You know, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm having my day. I'm doing what I need to do. I think Snapchat can do a lot of that as well. Unfortunately, with Snapchat, it's, it's, you know, it's gone in the wind if you don't, if you don't download it. Right. Um, and to me, that's, to me, that's where the automation comes from, where you need to start thinking outside the box a little bit where we're trying to sit there and say, yes, automate, but personalize that automation. And let's find ways to reference who you are and what you are you know in real estate and i'm sure with you in mortgage it's all about no like trust and you know you're not going to do that by sending out a canned spam in you know reference right right and, and, and not many people know this but youtube is a crm in and of itself right mm -hmm. because you know when you have a subscriber every time you upload a video your subscribers get an email letting them know that you've uploaded a video and so that's pretty cool. And so you want to try to work on getting as many subscribers as you possibly can. It's kind of like the likes, I guess, on Facebook. You know, when somebody likes your page or whatever, and you put an update on there, they 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 see it in their newsfeed, I believe. Um, so YouTube um, is a CRM in of itself as well. And then it kind of forces you to, if you put in your video, I was just having this conversation with a realtor yesterday, try to do maybe one video a week even for just two minutes, shoot it with your phone. I mean, these phones have great quality right now uh, for video capture. Do a video uh, on on a subject or where you're at. Um, we have a butterfly, speaking of which, we have a butterfly museum here in Arizona. And a realtor did a video of a butterfly of that museum and took pictures of the butterflies and put it all. Well, she's gotten a lot of views on that, on that, on that video. So it doesn't have to be real estate related. Just have it personality related. Absolutely. No, I, I think that's really a solid point. Am I breaking up on you? Because my video is coming in and out. No, you're good. You sound good. Okay, then I'll just I'll just deal with it. It's it's a graphics card. Once I updated to 10, of course, I upgraded to 10, things have gone a little squirrely on me. Um, yeah, but as long as we're not cutting it out, I don't care for my end. Um, yeah, good, man. But... 
Yeah, I, I agree. And I think those things, right? You could take do the same thing with the museums, restaurants, all that kind of stuff. And now you have this arsenal that can be repurposed. Times. And again, you could do all these all these different iterations and different communications with them. You got pictures of of your restaurants in the area and they're doing a fourth of july event well send out an email send out a blast to your clients hey by the way all you guys in the phoenix area you know having you know a, a, a thanks to the soldiers thing on the on the 10th whatever you know stuff like that you can send out there and it's out there for your clients and again it's those are the touches i'd like to see us do more often a little more a little more controlled and a little more again it's going to be a theme tonight on point i think we really struggle a lot with the fact that we're quote unquote too busy and yeah. i don't disagree when realtors are doing well in their life they are busy right out and about where all the things and i don't think i think you can automate things but i think you need to spend some time trying to strategy and how you want to communicate with your audience i you, one thing i do every morning um is i have um google alerts right i love google alerts um and so i have them put right into my email for the subject matters that i am interested in and a, I get a list every morning of the articles, the top articles, Google does the search for me, puts it in my email. I pull up the article and then I have links on there, whether I can you know, want to share it with Google plus Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And so I can just hit those buttons and, and tweet it or share it on Facebook. But one thing that I try to do on every single one of those, I try to read the article. It's kind of like reading the morning newspaper. And so when we talk about automation, I see a lot of people just retweet and re and they don't put their 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 um their own opinion or their own take on the article. And so they just retweet it. It's like, well, if I want to get to know that person, put a couple sentences in there in that automation that hey, great article, um, jobs are coming to Phoenix or you know, whatever. Um, this is great news for the real estate market. You know, have a little kind of teaser, if you will into there to help get engagement um, because once you start getting that engagement then you start you, it just works better for the automation the automation is kind of cold if it's just automated right but if you can put your own personal flair into it uh it becomes a a little bit more effective in my opinion yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah and, and that's one of the points i'm glad you brought it up that's one of the points i wanted to make sure we hit on is I do like, I like scheduling posts. I love doing that. I use Hootsuite. I use uh, Page Manager and Facebook. Um, you know, Twitter had its own scheduling tool inside there. So I would do it from each one. I like doing it because if I want to schedule these things out, even with, um, what's it called? Buffer. Mm -hmm. You can delete, but you can always add your slant on it, right? Which is always a good idea to do when you want to have that no like trust in there you need to sit there and say here's why i like this article here's why you need to read this article All right I, yeah. I will admit it and i've done it from testing perspective and i've done it sometimes out of pure laziness i gotta I get this article out. i really like it i don't got time to think about how i want to phrase it i'll put it All out right. there i get no views i get no likes i get no hearts i get no comments i get nothing but All i right. write something stupid as have a nice day in that article and i'll get something on it yeah and that's where i think automation gets a bad rap, right? I mean, automation is good. Uh, we need automation to make life easier, but we got to use it and then spit it back out. We can't use it to spit it out. It, you know what I mean? So like, I mean, studies statistically, if you have automation, you have a higher conversion rate with, you know, nurturing your leads and things like that. Um, but at some point that gets saturated and it gets too much. And unless you're putting your own spin or flare or slant on it, um, it's, it becomes ineffective. ineffective. Uh, at that point. Well, absolutely true. Internet marketers are great at that, right? Internet marketers are that stuff. They're going to get you to sign in. They're going to be, they're going to give you a free article, free PDF, free newsletter, free, whatever it is. And you sign up saying, great, I want that stuff. And then you're, they're going to drip on you once a week, two weeks, every two days, whatever it is. And they're going to keep doing it. And, and their stuff's already pre-built. Let me ask you this. Uh, is, is they also have one of the biggest, they also have one of the biggest unsubscribe rates to I me. Mean, it's a shotgun philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got flagged. I, I, I want to ask you this. Okay. And I'll, and I'll tell you my, my story. Um, is there a uh, social media platform that is better to have the automation on than another? So in other words, where you send out, let's say automatic 
tweets every single two hours or a Facebook post or, you know, whatever the case may be, Google Plus page, LinkedIn. I, I, I would say automation than another. I, I would say this. What you'll see some people do, and I don't have a problem with this, see some people pick their home base where they want to communicate all the time. So it'll be Facebook and everything else is automated from there, right? So a Facebook post automatically goes to Twitter, automatically goes to Google Plus, automatically goes to LinkedIn. Right. I'm okay with philosophy because if you're trying to manage one environment, that's fine. Bring everybody back into one area. I'm kind of okay with that. But yeah. as far as simply automation, what you'll hear most people say is if you're going to automate something just for automation, just send, 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 send Twitter is going to be the best avenue to have that. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's where you're going to hear most people say that if you're going to automate, that's probably the safest area to automate at because there's just so many people and there's so much noise all the time. So, so to go along with that, okay, um, I got labeled a Twitter bomber mm-hmm. um, at one point. I don't know if you've ever heard of that term. It's oh, kind yeah. of a geek term out there. But um, so what that means is that my podcast, um, you know, I'm kind of of the philosophy, you know, the more people see you, the more they recognize your name or your brand, the better your opportunity to break the ice with that person or get exposure in other arenas. Um, you know, if you're quite a little church mouse, nobody knows about you, then you don't get the exposure that you want. So, um, in Twitter, they had a, there's a program. It's not there anymore. It's through Yahoo pipes and, uh, in Yahoo pipes, you could automate your Twitter, uh, account. And so mm-hmm. I did that, right. Uh, Yahoo pipes isn't available anymore. Um, but I did that and I got just a boatload of downloads for my podcast. You know, I was getting probably 30,000 a month uh, downloads. So Twitter, like you said, is the fastest way to get the message out there as quickly as possible. And I got a lot of reshares. I got a lot of of, um, exposure, if you will. Uh, Did it translate into a lot of followers? No, it did not. In fact, it may have even pissed some people off because they'd see every time I would tweet, it would kind of almost be a repetitive kind of thing, right? So I kind of did it as an experiment. A little bit, um, but at the same time, also getting as much exposure as you possibly can. So, as far as getting the exposure, I think it worked. As far as getting Twitter followers for automation, it did not work. It just, You'll fact, see a lot of people. There, there is a gentleman by the name of, of Guy Kawasaki who's big in the social media arena. Um, yeah, very big. On Twitter, or on LinkedIn, I think he he posts uh, publishes articles and stuff on there. I believe. Oh yeah, he posts them everywhere. Yeah. And he he takes that badge that you just said, the Twitter bomber, he takes yeah. it with pride. And actually what he'll do in that complaint, he'll do it more. Um, yeah. he, he just simply believes that the more you're the more the more you're getting and the people that will ignore you will ignore you. They'll unsubscribe, they'll unfollow, they'll do whatever. Right. Um, and he's plenty okay with that. You know, Twitter in that area, that's why I say it's okay, because Twitter, unlike Facebook, you gotta kind of treat Facebook um you know, like that, like those fragile eggs, right? You can't sit there and just beat on them because eventually they'll break and they'll, you know, they'll dissipate from and just chase away because right. it's, it's a direct friendship, right? You, when you're in Facebook, it, it, it's, it's either if one person doesn't, if one person unfollows, you're unfollowed, right? So it's not like you can have a two way communication. Twitter, right. if I don't follow somebody, they, they can still follow me all, all they vice versa, right? So that can happen all the time. And and with hashtags and replies, I can still communicate with people that are even not following me at all. Um, and they can want to do it. So that's where I say Twitter. I don't worry about the Twitter bomber thing. I know some people get, you know, and, and realtors are actually with that, right? It's it's a huge issue with realtors that they want to be liked by everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, they take a pre- good point, right? Because I, I got a lot of hate tweets, believe me. Oh, yeah. And I oh, said... Yeah. I said, I told them, welcome to the block party. And then I'd block them. Right. So I tweet right. them back. Hey, welcome to the block party. And I'd block them from seeing my, my Twitter account. Right. And, uh, I kind of got a kick out of that. I'm kind of, I guess, weird like that, but, um, I thought it was kind of funny. And so, um, you do get some hate, hate mail from it, but sometimes in our society today, hate mail or hate tweets, that's exposure, Right. Um, but I think I think it's too many times in our in our side of the fence in real estate, just like you said, we want to be liked by everybody. The reality is you're not going to be liked by everybody. 
It's not going to happen. No. Well, no. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a realtor. I'm a trainer. I'm a high eye from your disc profile. So my, that's my thing. But at this point in time, I've done this for so long. I know one thing. I'm going right. to come across somebody that's going to post something stupid because they're trolls or they're actually genuinely just not going to like me because something I said, how I talk, how I use right. my hands, whatever. Um, and it's kind of, it's, it's okay with that stuff. But at right. least I know the people that I'm communicating with and that I like and that are talking to me. They know who I am and I'm getting that relationship. And again, that's where I think I'm getting back to kind of the theme here, which is where the automation comes into play. Because I am I am genuine. I am who I am. And I'm not going to worry about the rest. Right. But from an automation perspective, I think if you're going to automate anywhere, Twitter, you could even argue Google Plus because there's not enough people on there. People you're going to offend less. <laughs> but um, to me, and I'll, I'll do that quite a bit. If I post things on Facebook, it goes to Google Plus just because I don't care if it's duplicated. And then you get that conversation. Automation. Does it matter if you're duplicating the same content among multiple streams? So let me, ask, let me ask you this. What uh, does automation, because you brought up Google Plus, right? And I, I like Google Plus. There aren't as many people on Google Plus. Um, I don't think people know how to use it. Does automation help in SEO and in any way? Uh, here's where it will help you, right? It will help you in SEO because... Google just made a partnership with uh, with Twitter so they can start doing searches on Twitter's API. Mm -hmm. You don't have the ability to search Facebook, very little anyways, and right. you've got to do Twitter. So you don't, so Google didn't have this social graph that they got to search on. And Google is, is search data, right? They want to know what's going on in the world. They don't necessarily want to be Facebook. They don't want to own the world, but search the world, right? That's where their value comes from. So, where it comes from a value from an SEO perspective is you have a Google Plus page and specifically a Google Plus business page and you're seeing things on there. You are likely to show up in Google searches because they are, have some preference in that arena. Right. So if I post a Twitter page or more specifically a Facebook, because that that will the text account will most likely translate easier over there. Mm -hmm. I will have more ability to be searched and, and hence be found as far as as Google is concerned and have that out. Notice if you ever do create a Google business page and you search for your name or your business name, on the right-hand corner, it kind of has like a business page account. You know, you have a picture of what's going on. You have some very, very simple information out there. It becomes extremely helpful. Um, I think eventually if Facebook ever breaks down and says, fine, we partner with that, Google Plus lose some of that, that prioritization. But right now it's up there because it can only search that in Twitter. A little bit of LinkedIn, but not much. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of LinkedIn, yeah. So, I, you know, I didn't know. I, I know when I post things on, on Google Plus, sometimes I share it with Google Plus through the Google Alerts. Sometimes it'll show up on a on a search. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm searching for my own, um, you know, API address or whatever it is. The, the computer identifies that I'm local or I don't know how that works. But um, sometimes I'll see when I post something through Google Plus from Google Alerts and I search it, my you know, a little avatar will show up in the search thing showing that I posted an article. So I didn't know if that, you know, it helped or didn't help for some of the. I, I think it helps. I don't think it helps as much as we want it to help. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing that goes on. Does activity on an account, does that, does that count toward anything? I mean, you know, if, if I'm heavily active on an account like a Google Plus or something like that, does that put me above somebody else or is it the number of followers that you have? In there that helped that or how, do, how does that work so you know? it used to be google used to put a huge preference on what they called content right so everybody was doing seo 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 right so they were worrying about search engine optimization and they were worried specifically about keywords right so you see a lot of people teach you know how to play google and they'll teach it, it was, they call it the three percent rule essentially where you had to have three percent of your words in any conversation you're having in any environment be that keyword that you're trying to be found in now what they are saying, they're changing the platform, which it with, came out with some of the new algorithms that Google has created. It's called contact. And what that essentially is meaning is they're trying to get away from playing, right? They're always adapting, so we're not playing the game. And they don't even show us the two key factors. They don't tell us the two key factors that they're searching on. But what people are learning is it's the context. Are we having the same conversation across multiple boards that are saying the same thing and we're talking the same way? That will help you. So, yes, I would say... Um, I won't say quantity specifically, but quantity focused, yes, is definitely going to help you have that 
findability and that relatability. Because again, now you have been deemed as far as Google is concerned, relevant to that conversation thread. Gotcha. Now what, you know, we talked about email a little bit and the automation of email there. Um, what, what areas are best to use automation? Tell me like, um, you know, where do you see the best effectiveness or the, the most return on using automation? So there's two things that I really have done it for, especially early on when I was focused on liberation. And it's timely for this time of year, right? This year, we're, we're at Thanksgiving and, and the holidays, right? So one of the things that, that I think is extremely valuable right now is the ability to grab people's information quickly and make that process out. So what so, I like is I'm... I'm a big Evernote fan. So what I do, and, and I, I was telling you this before we started, is one of the things that I have done in the past is Evernote will let you capture a business card. And in that business card, I can immediately put the database. Not only do I have it in Evernote now, but I also have their phone number, email address straight from their business card, and it's already in the system. And by the time I leave an event, I've already emailed those guys. You know, thanks for, you know, it was a pleasure meeting you last, you know, let's catch up soon. Boom, type of thing. You know, very generic email, but something that said, you know, I appreciate it. And nine out of 10 times, I'll be honest with you, that email has gone out before I have left, even in the party itself. They get home, they're already seeing me. They've already heard that stuff. And I already had that conversation. So I love having automation from a contact growth perspective where I have that stuff out there. Uh, afterwards, those emails afterwards will be a little more on point and I won't use a canned marketing system, so to speak. I'll have other things in place. But that initial email is always very, custom, not very customized, but very, or very canned. And also customize this first one's very canned because I don't have time to worry about boom, 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 boom. Now, if I do, I'll write X. You know, I like talking about X with you last night, but for the most part, it's very quick. Um, the other thing that I do like is I, I love tools. Um, my favorite is IFTT, which is called If This Then That. It's a website that will yeah. do a lot, lot of functionality for you. Yeah. Um, and I've hinted about this in the past. If anybody's watched some of our blabs before that I've done with you or and or Terry. One of the things that I have done is I'm not big on answering my phone. <laughs> Just straight and simple. If you're going to communicate with me, you're going to text, you're going to you're going to email me, Facebook message, something to get my attention. If you are calling me, I let that phone ring. If I recognize the number, I may, if the ads are still not going to answer, I'm going to wait for Google Voice to transcribe it for me. But what right. I do do so I don't forget these phone calls and when they happen is if this, then that, I set up and they will record. Uh, either on a spreadsheet or I like it out of my calendar where I can automatically record the day time when that phone call happened. Yeah. Yeah. I use, uh, I use that. There's a lot of recipes in there. It can be a little confusing, a little daunting in that, um, in that, uh, if this and that, but there are some really, really good recipes. I use that quite often myself for a lot of some of my automation, but I try not to overdo it. Right. And that's where I think we get a little overdone in real estate that we want everything automated. Therefore, it gives us time to go and drive and show properties and, and you know, work on contracts. And we got this thing working behind the scenes. And that's where I say you can get a little overwhelmed with automation and get a little too um, unpersonalized with that automation. So if you're going to do automation, make it as personal as you possibly can. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I, most of my automations have have nothing to do with conversation, completely honest with you. They have very little to do with that. Um, right. Because I am, to me, they're just too bland, they're too dry. And I I have gotten myself so taught to reading these things, I just delete them. I mean, look at some of the emails. For instance, you know, here's my favorite, here's my favorite internet marketing trick they realized lately. You don't recognize the two. You don't recognize the person that comes. They will do is I'll put R-E colon. That means reply, right? So we think we have patience, so we'll open up the email. I've been so tuned out of that stuff. If I see that, I almost automatically delete that email anymore because I know it's so, a game. So say that again because I'm don't. i not even familiar with that. So tell me that one more time. You get an email that says R-E colon in the subject? Yeah, so right back in the day, whenever you – now, you don't really see it in current email programs, but we're still we're still trained in that. Anytime you saw R-E, it was a reply, right, which means I emailed you and and you sent a reply back to me, so you hit your reply button. And what it would always do in the subject line of the 
reply would it would put our email you know, that that was a reply to the conversation that we are, are currently having. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what what internet marketers have found is when they put that re in there in the subject line, right? Their open rates are huge because they're trying to put the persona that the conversation had taken place before, kind of thing. We, we've already started this conversation. We're just finishing it up. Right. Right. <laughs> so. I, I pretty much at this point in time almost delete them immediately because I know they're can and I know I don't. My thing is if I don't mind it for the most part, but, but if you're going to game me, I'm not going to pay attention to you. I want you to be legit. I want you to be a person. I want you to be real with me. I want you to do something. I don't want you to play me. Um, right. And that's you get the millennials and the younger people the same way. They don't want you playing. They don't want you playing the system. They want you having conversations with us. And that's why Instagram, Snapchat, um, which is huge, by the way. Their growth has not yeah. stopped yet. Yeah. It, it's all huge. And I think, again, you're not automating that stuff, but you can take that stuff and repurpose it, which will let us automate personalization down the road. And so the other things that I kind of like doing is I will take YouTube stuff. I will take Snapchat. I will take Instagram quick videos or Twitter quick videos. I will have them. I will load them, and I'll put them in e emails that I want to send out to other people, right? So, so here down the road in very terms what i will do is i will do a periscope at some point in time periscope has a, a software called catch.me and i'll put it in the show notes show notes it's like sound like a professional um, <laughs> that. Uh, i'll put it in the comments section over here where it will capture automatically my video that i'm creating and so if i want to be on point with maybe a hot wish maybe i'm walking my dog or maybe when i'm doing this weekend and i'm doing uh the christmas tree cutting that i'll be doing on, on uh good friday or uh black friday yeah i'll take some periscope videos and conversations out there that video will automatically get recorded to catch.me and now, now i can automatically record so i don't gotta worry about downloading gotta do nothing these are automations that i like i'll put it out, out there and now i can systematically put that into an email and send it out to people Right, I can repurpose and bomb bomb and put it in people. Wish you a Merry Christmas. You'll put some little crazy little pictures in front of it. Maybe put some stylized stuff on it. Or better yet, maybe do that through Snapchat and record that and do that stuff. These are the automations I can, I think, are more prevalent because these are ways of, and I don't, I consider it automation, but I really consider it repurposing things that I'm doing that's going to help send out and personalize conversations with my clientele. Right. Yeah, the catch me. I've never, I've never seen that one. So, that that catches all the video that you shoot with your phone. Is that is that how that works? No, it's very specifically for Periscope or Meerkat users. Now, see that's that, because I know that um, we've got some some people here in the in the chat um, who who use Periscope, right? So I think Mary, I think she mentioned that she uses Periscope for open houses and stuff, and which is you know kind of catching on or whatever. So you then coordinate the catch me you film because i did an open house one time and i filmed it on on periscope i gotta tell you the video quality was horrible i had it it was all pixelated and i don't know if it was just the internet quality or what but um but when i tried to replay it it just was like not good video quality wasn't good so does catch me does it um it it, it won't enhance the quality it's exactly what's out there here's what okay. i'll tell you though with periscope and 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 that specifically now, if you're trying to repurpose the video, you might want to be a little more cautious about it. And maybe it's something you want to worry about a little bit more. Right. But with video right now, the expectation isn't high. Right. It isn't where things needs to be quality production. Now, for like me and you who are trying to do things like this, we have a little more. Our eyes and we have a little more pickiness about what's going on in these things. We want certain views and we want certain looks and we want to present ourselves in certain ways. Right. But what I'm going to tell you from an audience of. They just want to see it. One of the biggest things that you can go on Periscope and see right now, it's always huge hits, is you'll study going out and videotaping Walt Disney World. And they yeah, that's get a huge product. hits all the time. And the quality thinks. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes I can't even picture out if that's Snow White or Sleeping Beauty. I mean, it's good. <laughs> right. um, or Elsa or whoever else it may be at this point in time of year. Um, but my thing is, is, you know, if, if the video man, this is not going to be the solution, but I don't want people worrying about the video. I want people worrying about the message, right? Doing this stuff and you're tying some things in the background and saying, have a, you know, have a great holiday season, Merry Christmas, however you believe in saying this, then, then it's okay. If you're worried about the quality and that's what you're, you're trying to present as an image, well, then that catch me is not going to be the solution because it's just capturing the quality that you're sending out. 
Yeah. And that's, um, that's the other thing too. You got, if you're going to do these things and, and automate some and repurpose these, you know, think about what you're shooting. I, I see some of these periscopes and see some of these other live streaming and they've got a phone and, and I'm watching them and I'm getting like motion sickness from watching them because they're swinging it around and doing all kinds of stuff with it. So just be very, very, you know, cognizant of what you're actually shooting. Uh, because if you're going to repurpose it and put it out there somewhere, um, it's going to be out there. If people get sick, they're going to turn off and you just wasted your time with it. Well, and that, that brings up a good point. And I'm going to have to write that down on my little cheat sheet of future of future blabs we do because there's some of the conversations we need to have. How to hold your camera still. Right. <laughs> um, because I think you're right. I, I think there are huge things inside this arena that you got to be careful of. And again, quite not be important. But viewability definitely is, right? Yeah, tripod. So Absolutely. again, if I'm wrong, trying to show something, <laughs> right? probably not, not the strongest idea. But exactly. That's where I was going to go with that. And that's perfect, Kenny. Um, one of the things is a tripod because there's really some neat tricks you can do. It and you could just stand it somewhere. But there's actually some really neat holding tricks you could do with the tripod in your, and keep it tight and the video will be solid. Um, there's all sorts of really strong solutions you can do that way that keeps that video really, really slick. And to be honest with you, from a from a tripod solution, there are simple little tricks that you can buy. And unfortunately, mine's in my bag right now that you can wrap around and it's it fits your phone. And so you can have your, have it anywhere you want and just go with it. You broke up there, Justin. Say that again because you broke up there just a second. What did you so say? So there are cheap there are cheap tripods out there. Um, I forget what mine is, but um, they're like Gorilla Pods is what the, some of the brands are called. There's other takeoffs of it. But these things will wrap around poles, right? So you don't necessarily have to have it in a tripod oh, situation. Yeah. You're gonna, and they'll fit your camera. Have you seen – Have you? I've seen this. Um, it's been right, on phone, YouTube, rather. Um, And I forget the name of it. I, I, man, it's spacing me right now. But it sits. it's a tripod. It sits on – but it follows you. And it's for GoPros, I think, or something. But I'm sure you can mount maybe, maybe even your – your your smartphone or something to it but you and you wear like this band or whatever on your wrist and it follows you um wherever you're going and it's on a tripod and it's held steady um have you seen that at all uh i i have not seen it i had heard they were working on that technology i did not hear that they actually uh, built a, that technology a, yet a little five second YouTube, you know, commercials or whatever, when you're watching a YouTube video, it'll pop up or whatever. Uh, and I'll have to get the name of it. I'll have to put it out there. But um, that that looks really, really cool. Um, so, which I thought would be very, very good for somebody who's wanting to do either live streaming or something from an open house. And you're walking around in a, in a room, you can't walk, you know, around the whole house, so to speak. But you have your own little uh, camera assistant, if you will, right there um, on the tripod. I also saw um, Jorge um, Cuervas, right? The guy I do the the uh, real estate roundtable with. He's got an actual—I don't know what they call him. I'm not—I'm um, not—I um, don't know. I'm not uh, all computer savvy or camera savvy, but they have those like hip holders or whatever that kind of hold. But they're—they're they're a gyroscope that kind of keep everything kind of level and steady. Have you seen those? Mm -hmm. Too. I have seen and them. I haven't used them yet. They look fascinating. Yeah, and they they will hold like a DSLR camera, or even a you get the adapter and you can put your phone on there too. So there is, you know, I guess money's you know the sky's the limit when it comes to some of that stuff. How much you want to, excuse me, spend on that? But you know, please don't do this shaky stuff. I, I just, uh, man, I get sick uh, when I watch those videos and I turn them off real quick. But speaking uh, of yeah, no, no, you're right. Well, that's huge. I mean, that's huge. I mean, one of the things again, and I keep teasing this because I don't have it done yet. Eventually, I got to stop teasing and to present it for a blab. Is um, you know, one of the things you're going to be able to start doing is also create these capture points with your phone that you can do from a virtual perspective, right? And again, if that stuff's shaky and you're doing it in a timely fashion, could you imagine putting a, a device around your face and watching that? I mean, you, you'd last two seconds. Yeah. Um, so there are things you got to think of, and there's definitely things you have to make sure that you're paying attention to from the consumer level. Right. But, uh, but it is, um, it's definitely something. Yeah. And just to go real quick. Um, yeah, as far as drones still go, John, things you got to worry about with that is right now the rules in place is 
especially from a real estate perspective, and you have a license to run a drone and capture stuff commercially, you can quit yourself in a lot. So there are realtors out there doing all the time and they're taking those risks and that's what realtors do and they're uh, not, not judging. But the the rules in place can put them in a very hefty, finable situation right now. And and since um, that's where they're standing right now, I don't I don't take those steps. I think it's an, ask, an awesome to be great to do drive-bys, fly-bys, because uh, going back to what Jason was saying with those things that follow from a tripod perspective, their drones built specifically for that. You could literally be walk, walking around a community follows behind you 10 feet at a certain level. It'd be awesome to be able to do those, those kind of things. But until I feel like, um, the FFA and FAA, FFA, that's future farmers. Um, <laughs> uh, until I feel like they actually have, have a ruling that makes sense from a commercial realtor perspective, I'm, I'm kind of keeping hands off on that. Um, I think they're, they're you know, I'll, well, I'll keep on it. Well, I, I, I disagree. You, I want to mention about the drone thing and following, cause I've heard that, now, uh, quite a bit here the past, you know, two months or whatever, that they have the technology where it can follow you and, and you could literally like walk through a house and have this little drone with a camera on it following you, kind of being your camera or wingman or whatever. Wouldn't the sound, I mean, the sound, right? You'd hear this like buzz, right? You're, it's not like you can give like a, you know, it's great for like if you're canoeing down the river or something like that and you, you put some overlaying music on it or something like that and you take out that buzz. But for real estate, it might be a little difficult until they can get sound quality in in there i don't know maybe there's some kind of wireless microphone that you can plug in i don't know um that would now, now you're talking right they had that technology where i could be mic while we're walking and now you're talking yeah, right <laughs> I, I don't i'm sure it'll come at some point but uh for right now i think the buzz of the actual drone w- would uh kind of be a, a deterrent a little bit for what we do anyway no i i would agree i and to me, I, I like it. I wish I wish more civil. Now, again, if you do it indoors, it's a totally different world, totally different store. I, that's your homeowner's issue. These epicles are uh, external. But, um, yeah, and that, obviously, you know, those wings are moving at a quick space. And the percussions that come out of those hit in the air is obviously distractions, right? So it just becomes a challenge that way. Now, where, where do you feel that realtors use automation? Uh, not where, but how do you feel? How do you feel that they use it the wrong way? In what areas do they use it the wrong way? Well, let us let me try to do this because I want to make sure we hit before we get in. I know we got about 10, 15 minutes here. Yeah. I, I'm going to tie both into one thing. I'm going to say how I think they're wrong and how they can correct it in a quick manner. Okay, cool. Right? So I think you were hitting back at the earlier session where realtors, you know, they'll find a, they'll find, find a, a news article, you know, an inmate post or whatever, and they'll post it out there. And I think that's fine. I think putting those articles out there are fine, but they're putting them out there. They're reading right now. So they'll put five, 10 right in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Well, no one's reading all anyway. They're not customizing. So it means nothing. Right. What I like is I use, you know, use puffer buffer or Hootsuite or what I personally like from a Facebook perspective, I'll use a Facebook post manager. And what I will do is I'll spend, you know, well, like, uh, let's say Friday. So I'll go Sunday. I go to Sunday every day and I go, or every Sunday I go to Starbucks and I'll spend two, three hours looking through news articles and I will post throughout the week. And what I'll do is I'll schedule my posts throughout there. So I'll find the articles I want to post on, maybe a couple of personalized topics that I want to go into and have those conversations. And now what I will do is I'll systematically decide to go out and what comments I want to make on each post. And now I have it automated. I'm not doing anything the rest besides answering comments on those posts from Twitter, from Facebook, from Google Plus, wherever I'm in in that environment. So I think that, you know, they do things so they understand what they got to do, but they do it because I, not so much from a lazy perspective, but from a misscheduling or, or a misplanning perspective. So they think everything's got to come out. They don't want to do it or they'll hire companies to post for them, which, by the way, from a social media perspective, poor strategies. Yeah. Never hire, yeah. hire anybody to yeah. do your voice. I hate that. Right. And people sniff it out. I mean, you look at most of the celebrities, right? Most of the celebrities have their own Twitter account all day. They won't let somebody have that. There is one exception to that rule, and it's Tom Cruise. And if you watch Twitter, they beat on that 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 Twitter account all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, I think we covered a lot, right? I mean, we covered some of the do's, don'ts, how to <laughs> so, use it, right? We did cover a lot. Um, so I think um I think we're doing pretty good as far as covering the subject that we wanted to cover, right? Yep, absolutely. Is there anything else that you that we missed uh, you wanted to cover or anything like that? 
No, we hit yeah, you know, we hit more than I even anticipated. So <laughs> if you saw my notes from beforehand, we hit more than that by all means. Um, the only thing I guess I'd like to leave with is again for me, I I'm a big formation. Just be on point with that conversation and 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 know when you're coming the theme, the branding, the message that you're trying to get out with your message will help you understand how you want to add automation into your business and what that automation looks like. Um, if you have no objective, you have no point, um, then that's what it looks like. like. And that's what a lot of the realtors honestly look like. We look like a bunch of people that are just posting because we got told to post. Right, exactly. That's that's exactly the deal. You think it's good and it's going to go viral or it's going to do this or that and you just get lazy about it. Social media, and I've said this a thousand times, Social media is a lot of work. You have to be consistent and you have to work at it. It's not, social media is not automated. It's not, there's things that can automate it to make it easier, um, but it's still a lot, a lot of work. So with that, I think uh, I think we covered everything. So um, I, if you wanna check out some of my podcasts, whatever, please visit my website, www.Valley of the Sun Real Estate Show and connect with me on social media. And if you missed on this blab, please follow me on blab. Um, and you're missing some of the live streaming. It's really good stuff. And, and uh, we really enjoy having people be a part of it. Yep, absolutely. Catch me on eProfessor of Real Estate. Uh, that, that is my website. I do blabs, follow me along. And eventually I will let you know when I launch my first podcast. So have a good one. Thanks for helping out, Jason. And we, uh, next one will be two weeks out. Next weekend is... <laughs> Yeah, it's holiday weekend. Thanksgiving, right? Yep, absolutely. All right, cool, man. Um, I'm going to put my little thing on there and that way everybody can see it. <laughs> That's right. why just back to me. Let's uh, go ahead.